There are also quite a few things you really have no control over. And these are the factors that are external to your business. The big picture is that in the big bad world that you're building your business in, well, that world is full of all sorts of things beyond your control. This is the environment in which your business is going to operate in every day. Now, just because you can't control those factors doesn't mean you can't account for them in your model. If you do, then you can respond quickly to both disruptive threats and possible opportunities when and if they occur. And understanding and preparing for these external threats is very important if your business is based online, mainly due to the speed and scale at which change can happen. So these are the external building blocks of the business model canvas. And as a reminder, these blocks can include number 10, market forces, the key customer issues in your arena, market issues, market segments, needs and demands, switching costs and revenue attractiveness. Or number 11, the key trends that are shaping your arena, such as technology trends, regulatory trends, societal and cultural trends, or socio-economic trends. Or number 12, industry forces. These include key actors in your space, such as competitors and new entrants, substitute products and services, stakeholders, suppliers, and other value chain actors. And then we've got unlucky number 13, macroeconomic forces. And these include macro trends such as global market conditions, capital markets, commodities and other resources and economic infrastructure. There's a whole heap of issues that you might want to consider here. Just decide which ones might relate to your specific business model. So how do you decide? Well, naturally, I've got a few more questions for you. And these include, for market forces, let's look at market issues. Can you identify the key issues driving and transforming your market from customer and offer perspectives? What are the critical issues that might be affecting the customer landscape? What shifts are underway? Where is the market heading? Or market segments. Let's identify the major market segments, describe their attractiveness and seek to spot new segments. What are the most important customer segments? Where is the biggest growth potential? What segments are declining? Or what peripheral segments might deserve attention? Needs and demands. Outlines market needs and analyzes how well they are served. So what do customers need? What are their biggest unsatisfied customer needs? What do customers really want to get done? Where is demand increasing or declining? And switching costs. Will these describe elements related to customers switching from one business to another business, from your business to a competitor? What binds customers to a company and its offer? What switching costs prevent customers from defecting to your competitors? Is it easier for customers to find and purchase similar offers? How important is brand, particularly online? And revenue attractiveness. Well, this identifies elements related to revenue attractiveness and pricing power. What are customers really willing to pay for? Where can the highest margins be achieved? Can customers easily find and purchase or switch to cheaper products and services? Here's some questions relating to key trends. Number 11, technology trends. Can you identify technology trends that could threaten your business model or perhaps enable it to evolve or improve? What are the major technology trends both inside and outside your market? Which technologies represent important opportunities or possibly disruptive threats? Which emerging technologies are peripheral customers adopting? Are regulatory trends. Well, this describes regulations and regulatory trends that influence your business model. So which regulatory trends influence your market? What rules may affect your business model? Which regulations and taxes affect customer demand? And socioeconomic trends. What are the key demographic trends? How would you characterize income and wealth distribution in your market? How high are disposable incomes? Can you describe spending patterns in your market? For example, housing, healthcare, entertainment, etc. 
and what portion of the population lives in urban areas as opposed to rural settings. And then we'll try to identify the major societal and cultural trends that might have an influence on your business model. Can you describe the key societal trends? What shifts in cultural or society values affect your business model? What trends might influence buyer behaviour? Now we'll have a look at some questions relating to number 12, industry forces. Competitors. We're going to try to identify our incumbent competitors and their relative strengths. So who are our competitors? Who are the dominant players in our particular sector? What are their competitive advantages or disadvantages? Can you describe their main offers? Which customer segments are they focusing on? What is their cost structure? And how much influence do they exert on our customer segments, revenue streams and margins? What about some new entrants? Can you identify new insurgent players and determine whether they compete with a business model different from yours? So who are the new entrants in your market? How are they different? Again, what competitive advantages or disadvantages do they have? What barriers must they overcome? What are their value propositions and which customer segments are they focused on? What is their cost structure? And to what extent do they influence your customer segments, revenue streams and margins? But what about substitute products and services? You know, are there any potential substitutes for your offers, including those from other markets and industries? I mean, which products or services could replace ours? Hmm, how much do they cost compared to ours? How easy is it for customers to switch to these substitutes? And what business model traditions do these substitute products stem from? For example, high-speed trains versus aeroplanes, mobile phones versus cameras, Skype versus long-distance telephone companies. Can we specify which stakeholders or actors may influence your organisation and business model? How influential are these shareholders? How influential are workers or the government? or lobbyists. And then suppliers and other value chain actors. Well, this describes potential substitutes for your offers, including those from other markets and industries. Who are the key players in your industry value chain? To what extent does your business model depend on other players? Are peripheral players emerging? And which are the most profitable? And finally, we'll have a quick look at macroeconomic forces. Lucky 13. Can you outline the current overall global market conditions from a macroeconomic perspective? Heck, I can't even spell macroeconomic, let alone know what it means half the time. <laughs> so, is the economy in a boom or bust phase? Can you describe the general market sentiment? What is the GDP growth rate? How high is the unemployment rate? What about capital markets? Now, describe the current capital market conditions as they relate to your capital needs. So what is the state of the capital markets? How easy is it to obtain funding in your particular market? Is seed capital, venture capital, public funding, market capital or credit readily available? And how costly is it to procure funds? And commodities and other resources, well this highlights current prices and price trends for resources required for your business model. So describe the current status of markets for commodities and other resources that are essential to your business, e.g. oil prices and labour costs. How easy is it to obtain the resources needed to execute your business model? For example, attract prime talent. How costly is it? And where are prices headed? And economic infrastructure. This describes the economic infrastructure of the market in which your business operates. So how good is the public infrastructure in your market? How would you characterise transportation, trade, school quality and access to suppliers and customers? How high are individual and corporate taxes? How good are public services for organisations? How would you rate the quality of life? So as you can see, there are a whole heap of possible questions to answer or issues to consider 
that are pretty much all beyond your control. Online, however, there are several specific external things you do need to account for. And I'll briefly mention four of the biggies here, which you can do something about. First up, are there any specific regulations that might apply to your situation? In the US, for example, the FTC has special rules that apply to people endorsing products online. There are also a heap of national anti-spam regulations, along with privacy rules, etc., that you must also be aware of, including, of course, the May 2018 launch of the GDPR in the EU. And while we'll look at these in a little more detail shortly, it is important to know that specific regulations will have an impact on what you do and how you do it online. And that might also include a variety of taxation implications depending on the countries you service. Another external aspect worth mentioning here is the reliance some people have placed on building their businesses on external platforms, i.e. platforms they don't own, such as Facebook, YouTube, Shopify, eBay, etc. Now that recent news item where a woman travelled across the US to the YouTube head office to protest her declining business fortunes is proof enough she should not have relied on putting everything into a free platform she had little control over. Thirdly, the amount of time, money and effort that people waste in trying to chase the internet holy grail, i.e. number one on Google, is mind-blowing. Consider firstly the improbability of actually achieving that. I mean, a 1 in 1.8 billion chance in the first place that's yours times the number of websites online, and then multiply that by the number of keywords you were chasing, along with the well-known fact that Google changes their rules, or their algorithm, pretty much every week or so nowadays. Look, can I suggest you really should put all that time, effort and money into doing something else? Actually anything else? To promote and differentiate your online business. And, well, apart from obeying all the obvious SEO rules in the first place, and there's more about that later too, please don't even be tempted to play in this unwinnable game. And finally, an area a lot of people do not think enough about is seeking partners for collaboration. As has been mentioned several times, the biggest problem you are likely to have online is huge competition, especially from long established players and companies with large advertising budgets. It could definitely be worth your while to see where and how you might be able to collaborate with your competitors, rather than go into direct competition with them. Next up we'll have a look at the value proposition canvas. Parts of this presentation are used under Creative Commons license issued by strategizer.com.